Hi everyone, this is a real quick tips video prompted by a post that appeared recently on Facebook. Social media can be a great tool, but I find it almost impossible to go back to previous posts. Searching social media is not an easy task. If you know a better way, add it down in the comments. Therefore, I would copy off text entries and I would also grab images using the Family Historian web clipper and get them onto my own computer. I also add a link back to the post, but I know links can die or the original user could come in and delete the post. Therefore, it's not there anymore as reference. So I like to get it on my computer and I'm going to be showing you that in this video. Coincidentally, Who Do You Think You Are magazine? I also have an article this month on using social media for genealogy research. Let me show you the post that prompted this video and the things I was extracting from that post and what I do when I get it into Family Historian. Because I want to be able to search back on that. The main thrust is getting text from an image and that little tip was given to me by an old Roots Magic colleague, Richard Crooks. Richard also followed me over to Family Historian. It's only available in Windows 11. If you're still using Windows 10, you'll not have that facility. So let's get started. This was the post that appeared on the Facebook genealogy group a few days back, and one of the names and geography mentioned was common to one of my wife's lines. Naturally, I want to capture all this stuff, and the easy way is to copy and paste this into general or research notes, but then this post is going to grow over time. This image appeared in one of the comments, and I want to capture that also. Most of you are going to know how difficult it is to return to a Facebook post and I will also show you how to get that link to a particular post and how to embed that link into Family Historian Notes. Firstly, the simple bit. I'm going to right click on the image and select Copy. Here is Thomas Halliday in Family Historian and I click on his Media tab. Right click in the Media window and select Paste Copied Image. Give the image an appropriate name that you can easily track and click Add. That image will now appear on your computer. If you don't have a rigid file naming system, then watch this previous video and agree something which suits your searching and sorting needs. Something you can easily repeat and not overly complicated. File names like image 01 etc are only going to let you down in the future. Really I would prefer to have the text pertaining to Thomas in my file so I can search on it at future dates. And this is the tip Richard Crooks shared with me, so thanks again to Richard. The option I'll be sharing with you is only possible using the Windows 11 snippet and tool. It doesn't work in Windows 10. Firstly, open the Windows 11 snip and tool. Press the Windows key on your keyboard and start typing snipping. You can see there's some keyboard shortcut options to do in the same. I click on New and draw a selection around the part of the image which is important to me. That's this section of text. That selected image is now on your clipboard. This little button here is the one difference between the snipping tool in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Text Actions. Click it and in this case select Copy All Text. Now you have the text on your clipboard. So how accurate was it? Here it is in Notepad and I'm not seeing any obvious errors except by uh, this one 15th of July. That should actually be the 1st of July. So I can edit that and just double check everything else is okay. Just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to simply paste that into a note. This is source data and really the text and image should be attached to a source or citation. I guess you probably all know that, but some people just prefer it in general notes. I plan a basic and simplistic overview of sourcing in the next few months as I want to demonstrate auto sourcing and also mention ancestral sources. Here I have Thomas highlighted. I click on the Note tab in his property box and I click on Add Note and paste the text into the note. You can change the font size here if you want. I want to add some links to this note, the main one being a link back to the original Facebook post. If you don't know how to get that link, go to the original post and below the original poster's name you'll see the date it was posted. Right click there and you'll see various options. Select the copy link option. I want to add the link to the top of my note. You can add various types of link in Family Historian. When I look at more links, I can add a family record note, a record source, record repository, research note, submitter, submission, media record or place record. I'm just going to add a web link. 
with the original Facebook post copied. Back to Family Historian, right click and paste. So this is our link. And this is the text I want to appear. You can make that whatever you want. I can also link out to web resources. It's noted here that Thomas was buried in Thiepville Cemetery. I want to add a web link to the Commonwealth War Graves page for Thiepville. I highlight the word Thiepville, right click and select add link. I'm leaving the name as it is as I don't want to alter the original text of the note. Here's the Commonwealth War Graves page and I could use web clicker to grab any of these images, but we'll cover that possibly in another video. Just want to add the web page address, the URL. I paste that to my link and job done. You can see that Thiefville now appears as a link. I also see Thomas was in the Royal Irish Rifles. I'm going to repeat that process and add a reference link to that text. Again, highlight the text, right click and add link. Here's the site for the Royal Irish Rifles. There's a further link to tracing soldier service records and lots of other tabs here. I'm going to paste that. That's it. I have the text from an image file in the Family Historian project. I have a link back to the original Facebook post. I have a quick link out to Thiepville Cemetery and a quick link to the Royal Irish Rifles site. That really suits what I want to do. I've closed all my previous web pages and you can see if I click on any of these links I jump straight out to that resource. And you can do all of this from the note preview pane. You don't have to open the note for editing. All quick, efficient and simple. I've selected somebody completely unrelated for another quick demonstration. The address Elm Street was mentioned in that article. I always record street addresses when they're mentioned as I like to track micro-community associations. From a research point of view, I'm curious of what other Elm Street family activity might be hiding in my file. I press Ctrl F and you can do the same by clicking on the binoculars on the menu bar. I can deselect various data types here if I wish. I'm just going to leave everything selected. Enter Elm Street and press Enter. Family Historians search in the complete database and it will report all instances of Elm Street. There's quite a few results here. Let me resize this. And I can sort on any of the columns. Hmm, sorry for the pause. I think I've actually discovered some surname associations I was previously unaware of here. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to look at those afterwards. I can send this result set out to a results window. That's going to appear on the sidebar here. And I can do that for several other searches. So I can click back and forward in and out of them until I'm satisfied with my research. On any result set, I can highlight an individual and select a diagram type. I can select ancestors, descendants or both to get a visual representation of that family. Again, several diagrams can easily stack down the sidebar on the left. I'll be exploring these afterwards for my own research, and what I'll be doing is nipping in and out of different diagrams and looking for commonalities between families. That really illustrates the benefit of grabbing text from images into your genealogy program. Other programs will work differently, but there's always notes that you can add stuff into. Whether they're good enough at searching them or adding links, I don't know. You'll know that about your own genealogy software. In Family Historian, you have loads of options to add both internal and external links to easily help you track back to your original source data. If you're using Windows 11, then go check out the additional possibilities of the snipping tool. I can already hear people asking, what are these little icons on my diagrams? If you watch back to my dynamic charting video, you'll see that you can just about add any conditional icon as a visual prompt. The Irish flag should be self-explanatory. It shows born in Ireland and before separation. The icon, which looks like a gravestone with a camera, tells me I know exactly where Elizabeth is buried, but I have yet to collect a photograph of her headstone. The 0, 1 and 11 show me that I have both the 1901 and 1911 census returns for Edward. Those are the only two available Irish census returns at present. I can also easily see there are numerous individuals here I have still to add census entries for. All very useful. Quick disclaimer. My channel is not monetized on YouTube. I don't accept monetary incentives from software developers or publications. The views expressed are simply my own. 
It's a shame you need to make a disclaimer, but sadly so many YouTube channels are driven by financial reward. I've only taken the first copy of Who Do You Think You Are magazine. I must say I do find it interesting. I took that on a promotion and I was very interested in the fact that it's a digital delivery, so it's available worldwide. It might kill my YouTube channel, but I've long wished that the getting the most out of books that software providers publish, I wish they were available for digital download. More and more, I do things on my tablet or a side screen. The, the old-fashioned book in hand is something of the past for me. Anyway, imagine if the manual for great software packages got pirated worldwide into millions of hands. How good would that be for sales? I started this video two weeks ago. My reward came from two new family contacts and they both came through Facebook. The result of that is I have a load more documents, I have a load more information and 30 plus more people in my tree. My next planned video was going to be a simple guide to taking your ancestry DNA results and uploading them to MyHeritage for the different and varied results. However, MyHeritage have withdrawn that possibility only within the last few days. So if your DNA is already up there, good job. It'll stay there apparently. But if you haven't uploaded it, that opportunity has gone. A thumbs up would be appreciated. And do add your comments down below, whether they're positive or negative. There was a lot of good comments came in after the Earth and View video where people were more familiar with the software than I was. Hopefully see you in the next one in the not too distant future. And don't forget to check out these popular previous videos.